Blog Talk Radio. I was a hard drinking sinner with blood on my hands. I was a hard drinking sinner, a gun in my hands, drinking 40 pounds of dinner till I met a big man. And the man said, How do you do? I do it, do. I do it, do. I do it, do. She's asking me, damn it. <laughs> well, I'm asking I said you guys, not you. I mean, I know you're doing awesome. It's because, you know, you're on the show tonight talking about the supernatural news, and everybody loves to hear about supernatural news. Yes, I mm. am pumped about this one tonight. I'm always pumped about the show, though. I'm excited. We have a great show so- planned for you guys tonight. We have scoured the globe. The freaking awesome news team has scoured the globe from the peaks of Kilimanjaro to the sands of the Sahara Desert. We have looked, we have been to different tribes. We've gone all over the world trying to find the best supernatural news for your entertainment purposes. And tonight we will right. we'll share the tales we have discovered for you. Yeah. I mean, you know, 60 Seconds has nothing on freaking awesome paranormal show. I'll tell you that, Ron. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, they don't, they don't get the kind of hard-hitting news stories that we're about to present to you. But first, Hell no. Holly and I have come up with an idea, an initiative, if you will, 
to help local bands or or bands who not even local bands, that's gonna be bands from anywhere. Small right, bands but we, who we, want we, to get up. some publicity. So why don't you tell why don't you tell them what, what we decided to do, Holly. Give them give okay. give them the lowdown. Okay, guys, so this is the deal. We want to help promote you guys. And in return, you guys are promoting us, really. I mean, you know, this is all free for everybody here. And the only thing that we ask for you guys is just to give us your information when you do contact us. And when you do have a song to give us, we do ask for, like, an MP3 because it's easier for us to put it on our audio. Um, But tonight... We actually have an artist, and I'm hoping that this is something that continues throughout the year because we're excited about it. We love music. You know, music goes with the paranormal. Music goes with everything. Music's great. It's like, oh, anyway. (laughs) Tonight, I got for you guys um, Rance Garrison. He is a local from over here where I am. And this is off of his album, The Fireside Season, and the song is called Die Laughing. Now, you can... um, Get on Rance's um, website and get some of this music off there. It is rancegarrison.bandcamp.com. And um, I did post that on our Facebook, so you guys can get that off there. But without uh, further ado, here is Rance's song. Sweet. <laughs>
Okay, guys, that was that Rance was Harrison. Yes, it was a great, great song. I really like it. It's got that blues feel to it, and um, it kind does. of like that. Yeah. Kind of like if we was going down down south into Louisiana and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, it has it kind of like that kind of back backwoods kind of feel to it. You know, almost you know, like a bluegrass like feel a, to it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it sounds like a song. You know, honestly, like maybe be on like. Vampire Diaries or something like that. Hell yeah, yeah I or, like it. Uh, anyway, if you're if you're a wrestling fan, sounds like something you know Bray Wyatt would listen to. Yeah, for all you wrestling fans out there. Anyway, I, that's I like freaking it. awesome, and we're gonna yeah, we're gonna be doing this every week, guys. So don't forget. But we're gonna get right into our supernatural news because we have lots to talk about. And um, yeah, freaking awesome. Do you want to do you want to start out our new little segment we have going on here? Start, start the show. Sure. Sure. Uh, Cryptid Corner. Yeah, let's do it. Or did you want to ask your or did you want to ask your question first for for at the beginning of your show too? Well, I can do audience. that, yeah. Um so yeah. I was curious for our listeners, who do you think would win in a fight, Bigfoot or a or werewolf? So that is on our Facebook too. I put graphics up. And you guys can reply on chat, you can reply um, hmm. On our Facebook hmm. or uh, Ron, what do you think? Damn. It's, it's, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, I know werewolves are fierce, and uh, you know, I think I don't. Bigfoot are probably bigger than werewolves, but I don't, I don't know how docile they are. As far as I mean, yeah. I've heard of. I guess I've heard of B- Bigfoots being uh, being aggressive, and I think. Yeah. If, I'd probably go for Bigfoot. I mean, just for the, the size difference. Assuming that Bigfoot is not uh, like Harry and the Hendersons type of type of deal, you know, I, I assume with just the, the the sheer strength and size difference. Of course, Bigfoot's slower than um, right. the werewolf, so I don't know. That's a toss up. Maybe <laughs> yeah, that's some. I mean, if I if I were to really break it down scientifically. Mm. Yeah, I think I go for werewolf. I changed my mind because the, the werewolf, oh, yeah. the werewolf can you know fight, retreat, come back, fight, retreat, come back. Unless, but Bigfoot can throw large rocks at the werewolf. That kind of uh, that would uh, immobilize them. Well, you know, this is this is stuff. I don't know if you know the show. What? Hmm. Well, I think either. Well, I'm here. Um, seems that Holly's been cut off. But she's coming back, so don't worry. Just, you'll be stuck with me for very long. But, yeah, I think big. Well, I think if, uh, big, if the werewolf uses a kind of attack, you know, dodge and move tactics and just kind of doesn't try to beat Bigfoot through strength, I think the werewolf would win. But did you miss me? You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone, <laughs> there, there were there were riots in the streets. People oh, were going man. nuts, oh, throwing throwing bricks through buildings and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm like she's You're coming like, back. People were outside. Yeah, we want Holly outside May. the door. <laughs> oh, There's that girl at Tops from Country. We can't understand what the hell she's saying. She's like, "What do you fucking mean, Bigfoot would win? Bigfoot would kick its ass." God damn it. <laughs> I have so much left for Bigfoot, but I don't know. I, I have to say, oh my God, werewolves on this one. I'm with, and Elaine, she's in chat with me, and I think she thinks the same thing. Mm-hmm. She said that um, werewolves could rip up some ass. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, well, I mean, if Bigfoot have higher ground, they can throw rocks at their werewolves, and, you know, I, I would take Bigfoot. But if it's on a level playing field, you know, you know like, and like a... Uh, in the, in the fucking in the octagon, you know, MMA type style. Right. I'll take the, uh, <laughs> I'll take, uh, werewolf. No doubt. Yeah. Well, Definitely. I think you know if we put them in a scenario. I mean, you you could have multiple scenarios. You could think of infinite oh, yeah. scenarios they could be in. You know, and who would win? So who would win in an underwater fight between Bigfoot and werewolf? <laughs> who would drown first? You know? Yeah, who drowned first? <laughs> Who would smell worse after a big after a water fight? Bigfoot or werewolf? Hmm, that's a wet dog or wet Bigfoot. I don't know. 
Yeah. Yeah, see? Anywho. <laughs> you okay, guys can answer that online. kind of questions we ask here. Yeah, uh, it is. It's crazy. Show. Which so I want to know figure? about... Werewolf or Bigfoot? Yeah. I want to know about your cryptid creature. I, I'm curious about what you're going to be bringing me tonight because I'm bringing one too. So this is going to be something new to you guys. I mean, we're, we're really trying to bring in new stuff to the show. Um, this is... Supernatural uh, not so you know everything's on the table. Yeah, exactly. We want to we want to educate as and and as well as you know entertain our freaks. So tonight I'm going to bring you a monster that is um has been seen up in Washington D.C. in Maryland. The monster is called the Snallygaster, and that you know. The name does not sound very scary at all, but it's actually sounds pretty funny. Snallygaster. <laughs> you should say it like an old man. Snallygaster. You Snallygasters? Yeah, there you go. That's like the old man from Family Guy. You Snallygasters? You Herbert. Hey, Ron. Have you had your peanut butter? Oh, my fault. You want to rub it all over you? That'd be nice. All right. Anyway. We're scaring little kids. The Snallygaster is a mythical dragon-like beast said to inhabit the hills surrounding Washington and Frederick counties in Maryland. Here's the background. This is from Wikipedia. The area was settled by German immigrants beginning in the 19th, in the 19th in the 1730s. <laughs> you can learn how to read. Early accounts describe the community being terrorized by a monster called a Snellegeist. That's German for meaning for quick spirit. The oh earliest that's right, I'm teaching you guys a different language here, so yeah, pay attention. It's the earliest I'm incarnations fine. mixed mix the half bird features of a siren with the nightmarish features of demons and ghouls. The Scala was was described as half reptile, half bird, with a metallic beak lined with razor sharp teeth, occasionally with octopus like tentacles. So it shit had tentacles coming out of its mouth. That's spooky. What? That's creepy. That's there I say freaky. It swoops silently from the from the sky to pick up and carry off its victims. The early stories claim that this monster sucked the blood out of its victims. Seven pointed stars which repeatedly kept the stalagaster at bay can still be seen painted on local barns. It has been suggested the legend was resurrected in the nineteenth century to frighten freed slaves. Newspaper accounts throughout throughout February in March 1909, described encounters between local residents and a beast with enormous wings, a long pointed bill, claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its forehead. It was described as making screeches like a locomotive whistle. A great deal of publicity surrounded the string of appearances, with the Smithsonian Institution offering up a reward for the hide. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt reportedly considered postponing an African safari to personally hunt the beast. So it got so much attention that the President of the United States wanted to come down to Maryland or up to Maryland, wherever, I don't know my geography, to try and shoot it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. In 2008, author Patrick Boyton published a book about the history of the Sallygaster entitled Sallygaster, The Lost Legend of Frederick County. The Sallygaster has one widely no- known enemy, the Duwayo. The Duwayo is reported to be a mammalian biped with features similar to a wolf, but the stands and nature of a human. So it sounds like a werewolf to me. Doesn't that sound yeah. like a, were- a wolf that looks yeah. like a human? Mm. The sightings of Duwayo, Duwayo are <laughs> primarily reported Whoa. in West Middleton, Maryland. Duwayo, Duwayo, <laughs> daylight, come and me want to go home. <laughs> Okay, we're ADD bad. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. We're, but it's beautiful. We 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 sing so well together. But sightings have also been reported in the in Wolfsville, Maryland. Uh, Wolfsville. How about that? The, a werewolf in Wolfsville. The Duwayo and the Snallygaster have reportedly had vicious encounters dating back to early settlement, back to early settlement of the Middleton Valley. So that's that's it. So wow. if you go to Maryland and you hear sounds of wings flapping at night to get back inside because it's the Snallygaster coming to get you. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I've got one for you. I do, I do. You ready to hear about it? Yes, I did. Bring it. Oh, you sound so excited, Ryan. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes <that's better. laughs> that's what I'd like to hear. Celebrate <laughs> good times. Come on! Okay, that, that, that's the that's, that's um, Tonight's cryptic creature from Holly to you guys is the devil monkey. The devil monkey is a cryptozoological giant monkey reported on June 26, 1997 in Duncansville, Ohio. It was reportedly around five foot tall and had long pointed ears. It appeared to be gray, had large dark eyes, long arms, a short tail, and had hair all over its body, about a half an inch long, and is reportedly aggressive. On January 12, 2006, a similar creature was reported in Chicago, Illinois. Wow. About the same size and shape of a dog. Another such creature was reported in Roanoke, Virginia in the 1990s. Hell it yeah. apparently walked on its legs while using its knuckles one at a time. They have also been reported to sometimes walk use, um, have flat, rounded feet, and are sometimes reportedly mistaken for kangaroos or wallabies. And often reported to resemble werewolves or baboons. So, baboons. I, and they're not just baboons. they're they've been reported in Ohio, Louisiana, New Brunswick, uh, Alaska, Illinois, Virginia, um, and Kentucky. And they still to get around, don't they? Jeez, yeah, they're everywhere. They're ugly looking factors like. too. And like my, I, it's just hard for me to. I don't know. You what said the it's hard. You stay? said it's hard. Yeah, hmm? it's hard. It's so hard. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> so what? What? What's hard? I mean, besides, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, that is my cryptid animal for this Monday. Nice. See now this Monday, so Super we are, Exactly, we are totally educating you guys, helping you learn more about cryptids and stuff. And stuff. Educating ourselves too, as well, you know. Hmm? I said we're educating ourselves as well. Yes, we are. I mean, I didn't know the devil monkeys look like a wallaby. I did not know. Oh. A wallaby or a werewolf? A wallaby. A wallaby is just fun to say. Wallaby. Wallaby. I'm, I'm from the land down under. Ooh. You better run. You better take a vow. No. Okay. Anyway, I'm over it. Let's go. <laughs> you, yeah, you feel better? Feel better now that you get, yeah, out, I, get, I, get out, get out, get you out of your system? Yeah, I was going to sing along with you, but I could not think of the words to that song. I was like, what the fuck? I can't think. <laughs> I can't help it. Somebody says Australia. I'm like, yeah, let's go for, to the land down under. Okay, anyway. All right. <laughs> oh, man. I keep having to burp here. So, mm. we have, like, oh. been working for, like, weeks now on Supernatural News because I wanted to get some of the, like, I, I read some of these uh, things that are shared on my timelines and from other people, and I'm like, oh my god, I got to read about that on the show. So, um, Ryan, I'll let you start us out tonight with uh, one of the articles that you found. Okay, well, I'm gonna start off since this is the Freaking Awesome Paranormal Show, and we are a bunch of freaks up in here. The title of my first story is. Horny ghosts are prowling remote highway and seducing drivers, according to paranormal investigator. All right. By their very nature, one does not usually associate ghosts with being sexually active or being troubled by desires of the carnal kind. But a normal paranormal investigator has made the sensational claim that hitching ghosts could be seducing motorists on a busy road in the U.K. Gavin Davies, the author of Ghost Sex, that's what I'm saying, Explain to Wells online that there is a highway highway. in Swansea, Wales, where he has investigated numerous incidents involving highly sexed, otherwise known as horny ghosts, and unwitting drivers. Mr. Davies has investigated various cases between the nomadic ghouls and their unnatural desires. I don't know. Seems pretty natural to me. Sex is pretty natural, you know? I mean, if there are, you know screwing goats or horses and shit. That's unnatural, but, you know, <laughs> like a ghost had sex with my cow. That, that'd be weird. 
and, re- and recalled one case where a Pembrokeshire man was seduced by a visitor from beyond the grave, posing as a beautiful woman hitchhiking on the A40. So that's what you do. You don't pick up hitch- you don't pick up hitchhikers, especially beautiful women Never. hitchhikers, because what do they usually end up being? Fucking ghosts. One time. Every time you pick up a, a female on the side of the road, she's beautiful. It's a ghost. Because if she was real, she'd be she'd have like fifty million guys on her fucking cell phone calling to pick her up. So got a little bit of advice for you. Don't pick a beautiful woman on the side of the road. It's just just gonna be a ghost and end up in trouble. That's another public service announcement from the freaking awesome paranormal show. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, here's what you said. I mean, do you see what I mean, though? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I would yeah, never I mean, pick up a sexy man on the side of the road. Would never. Exactly. No. I mean, I mean, plus it's not safe to take up hitchhikers, but if it's beautiful women, you know a beautiful woman, it's going to have heart, a cell phone on her. Going to find someone to pick her up. Huh? But Hart wrote a song about sexy men on the side of the road in the pouring rain. <laughs> oh, I missed that song. You know, and much as I love heart, you know, I'm gonna have to uh say I don't know that song. When it came into sight standing by All the I wanna do is make love to you. There you go. Song that came to my head. It was that heart too? I don't know who that was. Yeah, yeah. And then it was heart heart redone it. Who, whoever else oh. redone it. Yeah. Everyone's redoing anyway. shit. Why can't, they come, why can't they come up with their own songs like, What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Ron. Give my heart Ron. to you. Stop it, Ryan. Stop it. <laughs> You're making me blush. Oh, my God. All right. We're getting distracted here. All right. So the Pembrokeshire man talked to his author. This is what the Pembrokeshire, the Pembrokeshire man said. I was approached by a man who did not want to be identified because it exposed him to ridicule. He told me he picked up a, a hitchhiker who turned out to be a ghost. A ghost, I tell you, that seduced him. Now, I'm aware that stuff like this is often intended as erotica, and people have fantasies about it. And at first, I thought it was a whip wind-up call. Oh, <laughs> indeed. But this man genuinely believed he was seduced by a paranormal entity. He said that he was driving back from a date that hadn't gone as planned. He did not get his knickers <laughs> taken off. He saw a beautiful woman on the side of the road, and he picked up. He said, I say. The man, Mr. Davies, simply refers to as John, apparently pulled over and accompanied the mysterious lady to a public convenience, also known as a bathroom. He then explained how the ghost seduced John in terms too graphic to describe. John wrote of his encounter with, with the Jezebel from the other side. I started to smell something strange. At first, I thought it was a cigarette I, I, or something. I was choking, and I thought I was going to die. I was crying and everything. I was passing out. I just wanted a policeman to stop banging on the window to save me. I pushed her back with army force, and there was not a pretty girl on me, no. No, there was some haggard, <laughs> disgusting old woman with some awful skin condition. I said to get off me knob. I just screamed and screamed and she just vanished. Yeah. Like my little... <laughs> I do. Little I totally there. love your accent. Um, yeah, I mean... That's like the old hag syndrome, right? That's what it's called. Is that what it's called? Well, I'm pretty sure. I don't... I, yeah. I mean, it's, that sounds good to me. I don't know if there... I didn't ever realize there was a... Um, didn't realize there was a uh, term for it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's. Just, but you've heard that kind of. I've heard that story before, though, from people, you know, or like right. you pick up the, the the beautiful women and you look back and you know you see a beautiful girl, but there's like a like a rotting corpse in the back seat type of thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, well, you know, as far as. Feels. As far as a uh, sexual encounter with a ghost, he is not the first one to have one. And we have Kesha and many actors who admit that they have had sexual encounters with spirits. And um, might I say, I wouldn't mind to have that myself. Well, I, yeah, unless you unless you look up and you think you're fucking, I don't know, 
whoever you think is sexy. And then you look up and it's like half yeah, gelatin with true. the eye popping out and like smelling like a true, dead True, but that only happens to person. Man. Bad man. You don't know. I wonder what he's done. Okay, well, listen, I have got the old hag syndrome right here in front of me, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys about it. Um, yeah, so awesome. Really quick. I just, I want to get just a little bit, a little, not too much, just enough to tease you a little bit. Mm, stop teasing me like that, baby. Mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love when you feel like uh, I have knowledge. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh. <laughs> There's people that are actually attracted to people who are smart. Just saying. Hey, you know okay, we are the name we are smart the... sometimes. I'm not. I'm not book smart at all. I'm gonna admit it. I'm like common sense though. I'm like. Boop. Anyway, the name of the phenomenon comes from the superstitious belief that a witch or an old hag sits or rides the chest of the victims, rendering them immobile. Although that explanation isn't taken very seriously nowadays, the perplexing and often very frightening nature of this phenomenon leads to many people to believe that there are ghosts or demons. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway, the experience is so frightening because the victims, although paralyzed, seem to have full uses of their senses. In fact, it's often a con- often accompanied by strange smells, the sound of approaching footsteps, apparitions of weird shadows or glowing eyes, and the oppression weight on the chest, making breathing difficult, if not impossible. All of the body senses are telling the victims that something real and unusual is happening to them. The spell is broken and victims recover, often to the point of losing consciousness, full awake and well. They sit up completely baffled by what had just happened. I've had, I've actually had clients say that they've had, you know, something like men because of, I think the first thing they want to go to is like it's a, it's a succubus or something like that. You know, I mean, it, that, yeah, that so shit does really yeah, happen. Yeah, that was kind of, that's no. kind of what I was, what I was thinking. But, yeah. So was that okay. what it was? Is it old hag? What? That, that what the guy I, had, the old hag syndrome? No, no. They just had a spirit in our home. I mean, you know how they like to mess with you. I mean, you know, not... Anywho. Well, yeah. They... Well, I mean, I don't think it matters. I mean, I think anybody in particular... They didn't have sex with a man. Up, I'm you know. just saying, you know. I mean, nobody's that lucky where you you pick up a, a beautiful girl on the side of the road and have sex. It just doesn't happen. It happens like in the penthouse forums or some shit, but you ain't going to, you know... And if it if it did, you know, ask yourself, what the hell does this girl have that, you know, she's wanting to, you know, have sex in a public bathroom with, with a guy she just met, you know? It's like, I don't think you really want to touch that. Well, I know some people. No, I'm, I'm joking. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be weird. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to give, 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 Give us a what, story what there, Holly. Holly, whatever your name is. Holly, who's the heck? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I can't talk. I know. I got you all tore up. Anyway, like I saw this yeah, article man. last week, and I've seen it this week. A lot is circulating around on Facebook and stuff. But um, a man awakens after 12 years in coma and says he was aware of everything. Um, actually, da 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 da. You okay. Have a trouble finding your article. No, I have it up here. Okay. In the late 1980s, when he was 12 years old, Martin something something fell into a coma where he remained in a vegetative state for 12 years. So obviously, he's just coming out with this story. Um, doctors in South Africa were not sure what caused it, his illness, but suspect it was um, cryptococcal meningitis. <laughs> okay, that's probably not the way it's said, but anyway, meningitis. His condition grew worse, and eventually he lost all ability to move and speak and make eye contact with his family. Physicians said he would die, but his family proceeded with a with a routine. Every morning, his father would get up at 5 a.m., dress Martin, and take him to the care center. At the end of the day, he'd give him a bath, feed him, blah, blah, put him in bed. His parents set an alarm to go off for every two hours to turn Martin's body so he could... 
he wouldn't get bed sores. It was his life for 12 years. Today, Martin is able to talk again. He uses a computer to speak and is mobile with a wheelchair. His awareness has fully returned. So this is why this story is just not getting told. In his book, Ghost Boy, My Escape from a Life Logs Inside My Own Body, Martin tells what he remembers for, from those 12 years. He says he thinks he began to wake up about two years into the coma. He remembers many things from that time when everyone around him thought he couldn't hear them and thought he didn't know what was going on. Everyone was used to me not being there, and they didn't notice when I began to present again, he told National Public Radio. To be present again, sorry. Stuck in his body without the ability to move or communicate, he felt doomed. It was especially bad when the care center would sit patients in front of the television all day, watch children's shows. I cannot even express to you how much I hated Barney, Martin said. Oh, Sadly, Martin also heard his mother tell him, I hope you die. Wow. Joan, wow. Um, yeah, his mother feels guilty about this, but Martin understands it came from her own desperation and sadness from his bleak existence. So, yeah, that's, that's a very moving, moving article. Yeah, that, that is pretty, that's pretty bad. Yeah, I that mean, he, that he could about, um, he just, hear everything, but, you know, I don't, I don't think that, the mom meant it in a bad way. No, it sounds bad, but I think no. he didn't want her to him to suffer anymore. And he was like, well, I just exactly. want, it to, I want it to end so you can move on. You know, and it's got to be a toll keeping the, keeping him alive. With, Definitely. You know, I, I feel, you know, for me, I the feel family and stuff, healthy. so. But, you know, if, it's funny because, you know, if you get someone who's spiritually more, you know, um, open you have that in the back uh-huh. of your mind. You wonder, you know, is he is he aware? He's possibly aware. So, but you know, you take some family that's not familiar with that, and it, it's a. It, I mean, it's it's hard. I'm sure in any. Well, I mean, if anyway. Yeah, I mean, if you say that and you you have this, you know, mom said, "I hope you die." People take that and it's like, oh my God, she should be like you know, ostracized. Right. I mean, she deserved to. To live or whatever, and people right. take things out of context a lot, a lot of the times. I mean, what what else would you, know. you do? I mean, if your you know your child was laying there for so many years and you couldn't do nothing about it, you know. Mhm. You you especially well, if you thought she they would. Thinking out loud, right. and she probably even mean it when she said it. She was probably just had a moment where she lost. She was just had a bad day, frustrated, and she was there, and she broke down, and you know. But anyway, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was cool because it kind of shows you what we are capable of even when we are Mm -hmm. disconnected disconnected physically. But spiritually, our actual bodies are still intact and aware more than people think. Yeah, don't do it. Just just because they're uh, in a coma or, you know, they don't think think they can hear you, you know. Watch what you say, you know, because they yep. can't hear you. And if you want to give them positive thoughts, put positive thoughts into their head, give them strength whenever you're around them, you know, tell them you love them and hopefully they'll come out of whatever, whatever, or if they're in a coma, hopefully they'll, they can hear it and they'll fight harder to get out of it, you know. Definitely. And moving on to your next subject. All right, we're we're gonna stay in the United Kingdom, and we're yeah. going to talk about Slenderman. Slenderman oh spottings in the United Kingdom have residents of Kennock Chase frightened at night. Frightened at night, Slenderman, an eight foot tall specter known for kidnapping children, has been spotted in the sleepy t- mining town of Kennock Chase in Stafford, Staffordshire, England, over the last month or so. Brought to viral popularity by a series of creepy pasta stories and a video game sharing his name, Slend- Slenderman has become a part of current pop culture. His bizarre mythical history, his spooky, his already spooky reputation has tarn- was tarnished when a pair of young girls from Wisconsin stabbed a friend during a sleepover, claiming that they wanted to prove the existence of Slenderman. According to a report on the Metro UK, residents of Kennick Chase have spotted a mysterious spirit over the last month. Locals have described the operation as a lean, shadowy spirit with blood-red eyes. 
His clothing, clothing, his clothing is said to be Victorian in nature. Pied Green, a resident of Cadillac Chase, shared that she was visited by the Slender Man on December 14th. I was awoken just before 2 a.m. by an odd scratching noise in my bedroom. To my astonishment, there was what seemed like a sphere shaped shadow by the edge of my wardrobe. She, she, continued, she continued to say, as I tried to get out of bed and investigate further, the shadow began to stretch toward the ceiling. It was at that point I found myself faced with the most disgusting and horrific creature imaginable. It was about eight feet tall and had a white face with razor sharp fangs. The sighting, along with others, prompted Lee Brickley to investigate. He's similar, or similar, he's familiar with the Slender Man mythology, knowing that it has been a subject of folklore for centuries under various names. Brickley is attempting to figure out why Sl- Slender Man is frightening the residents of Connacht Chase, according to the Huff- Huffington Post. However, he has a unique theory that, that Slender Man is not actually visiting the town, but instead is a product of sleep paralysis. He is not dis- discounting that paranormal activity might be at play, though. I am drawn towards the idea of sleep paralysis due to the fact that three of the sightings happened at night when the victims were in bed. However, that doesn't explain the sighting at Castle Ring. I think that could be a genuine paranormal encounter. Although Prickly does not feel the residents need to fear the Slenderman at this point, he is concerned that his increasingly increasing popularity may coerce more violence, like the, like the incident in Wisconsin. He, said, he says it is best to simply remain calm and keep your head if you are in a slender man's presence rather than doing anything crazy. He says, what are your thoughts on the slender man sightings? Well. So if you see slender man, don't do anything crazy because <laughs> Brickley said so. Lee Brickley said so. I mean, so, I mean, I was about to go crazy when I saw Slender Man, but now that Lee Brickley told me not to, I think I'm going to keep my head. Because Lee Brickley knows yeah, best. Sure. Fucking Lee Brickley. Definitely. Fucking Lee Brickley. Love it. Love him. He's a good guy. <laughs> You're my boy, Lee. You're my boy. Mm. Um, Slender Man. That's a, that's a hot topic these days. That and the Black Eyed Kids. Slender Man can. That's a highly discussed thing. That's a review show like on how... Slender Man and the Black Light Kids. Black Light Kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about it on the show before, but I would like some... I want somebody that's seen the damn thing. <laughs> yes, we should put out a, a, a call. Send out, send out the freaking signal, like the back signal. Send out the freak signal. Yeah. And uh, see if we can... <laughs> get, 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 yeah, get some, like, what's our freak signal? Like a dildo deal, deal, in the sky or something? <laughs> Da, 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 da. Now, Ron, there's already okay. people out there who think our show is not about the paranormal. We don't want to throw it out there anymore, dildo. With same, freaking same awesome. Freak time, same it. freak channel. Dildo. Anyway. That's right. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so my next topic for you guys is I'm always, like, I'm really into, like, um, the lost city of Atlantis and stuff like that. So I find it interesting when I find this article um, one day. It's divers discover metal link to mythical island of Atlantis, an ancient Greek shipwreck. I'm really, I love, like, you know, um, I love conspiracy theories, but I also like like hidden treasures, hidden cities, stuff like that. It just it just intrigues me for some reason. I have no idea. Uh, yes, I've watched a lot of documentaries. Uh, I totally get it with you know from my dad. I think, but anyway, a team of divers have discovered dozens of pieces of ancient metals from a shipwreck aged two thousand six hundred years off the coast of Sicily Island in the south of Italy. According to the archaeology magazine, the wreck belongs to a Greek ship which carried ingots of a rare metal at Plato. Is it how you say it? Plato. Salt was mined Plateau. in Atlanta. Plateau. Plateau. Y'all, Plateau. this is where my books don't come in, okay? 
The wreck dates to the first half of the 6th century. It was found about 1,000 feet deep from the Gela's coast at a depth of 10 feet. So, I mean, you know, so that's pretty interesting. Anyway, um, they um, done a dialogue that gave a precise description of the mythical island of Atlantis, which was also the home of the temple of ancient Greek god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses, Poseidon. My my Noah's really into the Greek um, mythology and stuff right now. Um, Mm -hmm. He's a smart cookie. Here was Poseidon's own temple, which was a stadium in length. See, some people, this is what gets me, some people think, I don't know what everybody else thinks, that Atlantis was actually... Um, you know, like they say, the Egyptians learned everything from aliens. So, I mean, you know, you can't help but to juggle with that idea because some of the things that they built back then was just kind of impossible to get the way they were. So that really intrigues me. And lately I've been thinking about UFOs mm-hmm. really bad. Like, I'm just, I don't know. I've been thinking about UFOs a lot. So I really aliens on ne- you know they have ancient aliens yeah. on Netflix now. Yeah. So you can watch that. I'll talk well, I just, too much what you're I don't talking know. about. Right? I, I find myself okay. You know, in the paranormal field, we know, you know, we know the different kinds of hauntings. We know the different kinds of spirits. We know what's real. We know what people bullshit with us. You know, we, we know. But yeah. as far as UFOs go, it's always been a real interest for me. But I'm uh-huh. like, okay, you got the grays, you got the greens, you got the, you know, different kinds of aliens. But like. Uh-huh. Somebody who has the same passion as we do in the paranormal and the UFO field to come on the show and talk about it because, like, I have a love for you know, UFOlogy. It's just I don't have like the knowledge of it, and there's a lot more I would love to know. So, but anyway, I hate to interrupt you, Holly. I mean, I just, but I'm looking at the picture you put of the werewolf and the and the um, Bigfoot on our uh-huh. page. And it totally looks like the Bigfoot's popping a squat. <laughs> he's always shit. popping a squat. He's like, oh my god, he's got like fucking Bigfoot jingleberries hanging off his ass. Sorry, go ahead. I just had to point that out. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to scroll down and look at it. I was last minute that I can't help it at Bigfoot's taking a shit. It's oh, he's, he's a shit. hiding hide and go seeker. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing he's playing Doctor Goose is what he's doing. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, but anyway, y'all can read that article on if you want to look more into it. But I just love it when they like. I don't know if anybody's been watching it though. I've la- I've lost and lost. I've missed out on the last two episodes of The Curse of Oak Island and see stuff like that intrigues me too. But you know, these guys are looking for that treasure on Oak Island. Um, and I, I'm curious. I ain't seen the last epi- two episodes, so nobody nobody ruined that for me. Or I'll kick your ass. Yeah, he's he's gonna yeah, actually that, that does not sound like that at all. Bring it. I, I wish you would. Kick my ass. Yeah. Just take it while you're at it. Oh yeah. I'm going. I'm gonna kick your ass so hard. Ooh, kick it, kick it, baby. I like to hear. <laughs> all right, we think I think we have time for one more story before we go to break. Get it. So I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. Okay. No, 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 no. All right. I'm going to story about if you're in a market, you want a new house, and you want to move. You're like, you know what? I want to move into a haunted a haunted house. God damn it. Well, I got a list of haunted houses that are actually for sale. Uh, the housing market is in decline. But we here at Viral Nova, that's the name of the website, obviously I got this from, have a little tip for all you hopeful home seekers out there. Buy houses that are filled with ghosts. Finding ways to lower the asking price for a house is vital when shopping for a new home. What better way is there, there than to bring up all of the dead bodies and stuff? That's shit. That's works for me. Here are some of the haunted houses on the market today. Good out your checkbooks. The inf- infamous Amityville Amity- Amity- Horror House that is that was the basis of 11 scary movies in which families are terrorized by paranormal entities is once again for sale. You can buy the house in which Reynold DeFeo Jr. shot and killed six members of his family for just a measly $950,000. Keep the happy tradition going. The Soden House. The Soden House was once the home to George Hill. George Hill Hodel. 
one of the prime suspects of the Black Dahlia murder. Not sold, Hodel's son wrote a, wrote a book claiming his father lives in a short somewhere in the house. You can buy that room and a window that looks like a shark's face for just four million eight hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. Is that all? The Swept Estate is priced at a paltry twelve million dollars, but its real sell- but its real selling point is that Charles Swept killed himself. Here and there is a mysterious ghost window that, for other reasons, remains clean. Well, that's well, shoot, a window I don't have to wash. That's pretty cool. The ghosts probably can keep it that way so they can see your shining faces on open house day. Yeah, you're probably right. Lizzie <laughs> Borden's house. Lizzie Borden was a woman in, in 1892, was tried for axe murdering her father on stepmother. She eventually uh, she was eventually acquitted, so feel free to purchase a home where she laid her head for only six hundred fifty thousand dollars. There's also a apparently a Lizzie Borden themed bed and breakfast in the area that sounds like a real suit. Um, this fifteen million dollar home is for sale too. There were the reports of an of alien spacecraft visiting the house up in the hills of Los Angeles, where it is also apparently on an Indian burial ground. So we have aliens and Indian ghosts. Not to mention, it is, a, it oh, is wow. in its abandonment. The house was has become the home of Satanists and drug addicts. So yeah, kind of a fixer upper. It's actually yeah. a pretty nice looking house too. If you take a look at it, you can you know it's, it's on the hill. Part. It's got a lot of rooms and shit. I mean, besides the you know aliens landing on the roof and dead Indians coming to visit you and the you know Satan coming to your bedroom, it didn't seem that bad. The Chrysler, Chrysler Mansion in Staten Island is supposedly haunted by Lady Chrysler, who is still mourning her husband, Edwin, who shot himself in the head. The Chrysler family once paid their butler to kill a business associate as well. And the, them Chryslers, they got some some shady business dealings. Be a part of that history for just $2,499,000. Mm. Yeah, no. change. Oh yeah, yeah. Shoot, we could spend that. In the Zillow ad, the owners pitch this Victorian home as slightly haunted, but it's no big deal. As in, well, the neighbor found a human skull in the basement once, and ghostly faces of the past appear in the mirrors. No big deal. You can get it for one hundred sixty-nine thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars, or rent it out for six hundred fifty dollars a month. Well, that's not bad. Six fifty a month. It's cheaper than cheaper <laughs> than most apartments around here. John Brown bet. was a famous. Yeah, we should get it. John Brown was a famous abolitionist and was hung in Charlestown, West Virginia, in 1859. One of his captors bought the land where Brown was hung and was kind enough to on it to build a mansion there. Needless to say, it's super-duper racist haunted, guys. It can be yours for just $1,200. It, it was a racist house, apparently. Ma Barker's house is a famous hideout for gangsters such as Al Capone. That's it, Al Capone. After the longest shootout in that history took place, Ma Barker still said to haunt the estate, and you can buy this gangster paradise for just $1 million. Next one, this house is the location of the Janet Lee murder in the, in the movie Psycho. It is a beautiful house that includes a pool and a, and a small string section that plays repeating discordant chords every time you open the shower. That'll be, I don't think that's real, that'll be $3,950,000, please. Fuck, I cannot talk. There are a whole bunch of more houses that you can look you can look through and check out. I'm not reading every one because, yeah, it's not really that, that interesting. But, I mean, it's pretty cool that these houses are for sale, I guess. You know. Yeah, but I'd say most of them get bought out by people that want to um, to uh, make it into ghost tour uh, stops for people. Which I mean, you know, it's a good business. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, that'd be cool to, to be able to um, to be able to uh, you know run, run like a ghost tour in those houses and shit. You know. Okay. Yeah. I think it's time so you to gotta, take a break. I need to. I want to know. The, I want to know the song. You've got me curious. I've got to know what the song right. is. 
Okay, I'm going to play it for you. All right, guys, we're about to take a break here. We'll be back in a few minutes to read you some more awesome stories. Look too clear So bar may bring a picture Another round of brew Honey, why don't we get drunk and screw Why That song was uh, appropriate for this for this show. Yeah, it is. Yeah, show. Yeah, it is. Show sure enough. Show sure enough, motherfucker. <laughs> All right. All right. So I what you got for me, Holly? Holly Bear. It's not my thing. I, I'm, I'm oh, trying shit. to take it's snowing over here. Is it snowing over there? It's snowing. Well, yeah, you mean nothing new to you. We got about we got about two inches here so far. Oh uh, no, it's coming down. Maybe I'm spend, spending that in the office tonight. You never know. I'm walking in winter. I'm walking in the winter wonderland. Do, 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 do. Um. Mm. So speaking of aliens, where we left off at before, um, you know, we talked mm-hmm. about different houses that for sale, haunted the locations. Haunted houses, so. yeah. Yes, I wanted to. Um, I shared the post earlier. Um, it's about uh, the search for the first true alien Earth heats up. So this was just posted January the seventh of this year. Mm-hmm. The first true alien Earth may not elude planet hunters for much longer. This week, astronomers announced that NASA's Kepler. Space Telescope had discovered eight more relatively small planets that may be capable of hosting life as we know it. So you better get your ticket, bitches. <laughs> get on the train because they're about to about to leave and pollute another planet. Mm. Yeah, really. It's like Avatar. Well, shit. I know, like, there's people that has bought tickets to uh, to go into you space, gotta right? Like. Your ride. Yeah, they have like this the space like I guess they have those people who are like making spaceships and the people are taking 
I don't know if they're taking trips to the moon. I think they're just taking trips like out to the atmosphere, out into like space, and then they're coming back again. I think that's what they're doing. Yeah. What if they didn't come back? I guess the kind of child that's too much for me. Yeah, it's too high. Okay. Uh, but what uh, down? What have you do? Uh, no. yeah. It's like, oh my god! I, I listen. When I pull out of off of a runway. <laughs> When I'm on a plane, on a runway, mm-hmm. I have to, like, close my eyes and I squinch. And I try not to laugh my ass off because my stomach drops down to my cooter. And it's like, oh, my God, on a roller coaster. It's so intense. So you could just imagine me going up in space. Nope. No. Me either. No, but I think you I think you have, like, you go through training and stuff, so maybe your body will get more used to that. Than, yep, not you mine. Know. There was this there. I went to Radford. um for school and there is a dorm called Muse Hall and it's it's really big structure you know it looks like almost like an apartment building and if you go to the very top and you ride it down the elevator down to the bottom it goes uh-huh. so fast it feels like one of those drop tower things you know oh yeah you know you go up to the top and you fall down and then it's yeah. like an elevator you feel like you're gonna you know it feels like your stomach is going up into your fucking up out of your through your head up into the ceiling. That's all, you know, how you're fast you're going. Down. I'm like, oh, my God, my stomach's in my vagina. <laughs> Ugh, I do not like drop towers. So, yeah, little little fact about me. Elevators like get me. Towers. I get on the damn elevator, and I think it's just like a freaking roller coaster. I'm, like, standing there with my eyes closed, and everybody's looking at me like I just lost it. That's what happens when you like have three kids, people. You, you raising your head, you're raising your hands like you're, you're like on a roller coaster. Woo! You're you're like, you're drop. Listen, listen. This is what we do for entertainment over here where I, I'm from. If we find a piece of road that's got a dip, we speed up to about seventy and go across of it, and you, you know our stomachs drop. Here. We have to get, give the kids a cheap thrill. We're thrilled, and we're just you know we'll go turn around and do it again. By God, <laughs> cheap thrill. Yeah, that, that's we we do that here, but you know. You're like standing in line for, ele- for the elevator, like it's like a, a ride at Disney World. <laughs> Pack your bags, kids. We're going to the elevator. Oh my God! Woo-hoo, elevators kill me. I swear. I go, you know, I get in it and it starts dropping, and there goes my stomach with it down to my cooter. I don't know I used, why. I used to be afraid anyway. of escalators. Like if I didn't get off the escalator <laughs> at the very top, I'd get sucked down in. It's like walking, you know? man. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Off, yeah, I, love that you know, movie. Like, I love that movie. Walk like a man. You remember it? Oh yeah. God, that movie's a long. Uh, was, was that Howard Mandel and Get Down yeah, and Coleman? Yeah. Damn. I, I wore that movie out when I was younger. Walk like a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I anyway. wore that movie out when I was younger. I haven't seen it since I was younger. That. Yeah, I was. I love that movie. Oh my god. Or what about Drop Dead Fred? Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Or Little Monsters with fucking Harry Mandel yeah. and Fred Savage. Yeah. They were all good. I feel like, you know, my boys love Howard the Duck, too. Like, we got the movie, and we got, like, in the $5 bin at Walmart, and they love Howard the Duck. Wow. Anyway. Yeah, I remember watching Howard the Duck. Then I'm, like, Me thinking too. about Howard the Duck. I mean, think or about what? being, who was that girl that was in Howard the Duck? Oh, God. I don't know her name, but she's playing so much. Yeah. But, I mean, she had a scene where she made love to Howard the Duck. You can't... Well, it was... She was you can't live that she shit She was down. not making love to him. No, she, they weren't making she was love. She was him? just... She was messing with them, yeah. She was just yeah, trying to well, them messing with Yeah, well, messing with the ducks. I mean, it's not, you know, it's... May not have had full carnal knowledge with the duck, but... Even messing with a duck is bad. Maybe I know it's not a real duck, but, you know. Right. <laughs> Actually, Howard the yeah. Duck made, made a um, a guest appearance at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy. They did, and I think that was a yeah. clue to a new movie. I mean, that's, what else could it be? I don't know. I mean, shoot, Marvel can do pretty much anything now, so... I know. I mean, they, oh, they I can make a hard to duck movie. 
Uh, I cannot wait till February the 6th. The seventh sun's coming out, and I want to go watch it. It looks awesome. I thought you were going to say you can't wait to go see, um, what's that movie? Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. That's coming out that weekend, too. I, I've never read the books. I mean, I'm into mommy porn. Don't get me wrong. I love some porn reading. Woo-hoo. But um, I've never read any of the books. Oh, I know. I'm bad. Hmm? <laughs> anyway, I've got a story for you Well, I'm guys. sure they're going to leave a lot of shit out, too. I mean, it's like, what, is it rated R? I think. I don't know. I, I don't pay attention to that. I've never even read the books. Yeah. I mean, I've heard they're hot and make you... I, I, see, I've read, like, mommy porn vampire books before, and I love them. They're, like, really good books. Well, um, I mean, you know, it, it, there's so many expectations after you're hearing so many people talk about it. It's almost like yeah. they can't live up to what the hype is. Well, you know? I mean, and you know, the books I'm are always better than any movie. I mean, I'm serious about anything that's in that book is as freaky as what our thoughts are, you know? They're like, oh, well, that kind of seems kind of tame to me. What the fuck? But I never <laughs> read the books. So I don't know. Maybe it is as freaky as they say it is. I mean, is it like... I mean, I like real, never mind. I'm not going to talk about that right bondage. now. I think there's bondage in the book or something. I don't know from what I hear. Are they bondage? Sandra, please tell me. There's, if they are, I'm in. Screw reading the damn books. So i go watch the movie. She's in chat with me, so she's going to tell me. Okay, but anyway, no, I'm going to tell is. y'all. I'm going to um, tell you guys about this footage of a supposed apparition, I think, here in um, Pocatello. God, what's up with these names? Idaho. Recent bizarre surveillance footage from a local high school shows some unexplained activity haunting the halls of Pocatello, Pocatello, that's, I mean, that's the only way I can pronounce it, high school. On um, December the Yes. Huh. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Looks like Holly dropped off. So now it's the Ryan Show. woo Yeah, buddy. All right. I'm going to talk about Bigfoot while Holly gets back on the show. I don't know how to, you know, you know, figure out how to get back on. It's the um, apparently there's a Bigfoot sighting, and I don't know somewhere around here. It's definitely Bigfoot or something. That nails it down. The hunt for Bigfoot, aka Sasquatch, Yeti, abominable snowman, etc., has proven to be as elusive as a rainbow's pot of gold. In recent Im- years, images, films, and v- videos have come up a little short in determining the existence of the legendary hairy man beast that supposedly lives in the forests of North America and other countries. I have to admit that when I first started working on the series, I was a skeptic, says Keith Hoffman, executive producer of Animal Planet's Finding Bigfoot. In the Animal Planet video shown below, Hoffman introduces footage from New Mexico that he says is home to many alleged Bigfoot sightings. The footage shows what he describes as a figure that is clearly on two feet walking through the woods, as captured on a thermal camera, of a camera that sees heat. Hoffman admits it's difficult to clearly see the image in the video, despite the fact that it seems, seems to be moving. It either has to be a hiker or a Bigfoot, right, he assumes. Hikers said they were making noise at the campsite and that this thing walked by and is, it was kind of lurking, According to a lot of people, Bigfoot do like to lurk. But we're left, but we're, what we're left with here is an unclear video shot three years ago that purports to show something walking on two legs. Can a hoax be entirely ruled out? Is this just a human walking in the woods? Ex skeptic Hoffman wonders. One thing that makes it seem like it could be a hoax is that they didn't keep shooting. The guy says he stumbled and fell. The team skeptic, biologist Renee Holland, thought it was probably just a curious hiker in the woods, but she could, couldn't really explain why he was so much taller than the average human. Hoffman says he's still up in air about the alleged Bigfoot footage. I'm going to put this right square in the middle of I don't know. A word of advice to all Bigfoot hunters out there, keep hunting. So, 
Okay. Well, that's the Bigfoot story. You know, I'm kind of on the fence about Bigfoot. You know, I mean, I believe in spirits and paranormal. So, I'm going to have to say I, I believe there is something out there. I just don't know why. Apparently, uh, people can't you know how long I was talking to myself? about it being, well, <laughs> I yeah, swear to God, time. I was probably on there for five minutes talking to myself. I didn't even, I wasn't even looking at it. Shut up, I'm trying to say my goddamn story. You're interrupting me. Why don't you listen? <laughs> was it like that? Was it like that? You're no, so uh, no. Weird. Seriously, listen, I have two computers in front of me. I have a laptop to my right and a desktop to my left. I was sitting here watching Facebook on my desktop, and I didn't see mm-hmm. right here. I was reading off, and I was like, oh, shit. And this happens to me all the time on the phone, too. When I lose signal, I'm the dumbass. Or when somebody else loses signal, I'm the dumbass still talking like a big blonde. Yeah. What? Where did y'all yeah, lose he, me at? I don't off. even know. <laughs> that was funny. I've done that before too. I've, I've had myself on mute on my phone without even realizing it. I'm sitting there talking. People are like, Ryan, are you there? I'm like, I'm here. Why can't you hear me? Oh, you know, like my phone. Oh, shit. Okay. Like, take it off mute. Like, you know, all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry for interrupting you, and I hope you guys heard a little bit of that. Um, well, I heard, my, I heard all of my story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, continue. No, I'm done. I, you, know, you, you need to continue your story when you're, you were well, talking about. I don't even about. know where I list off. I'm blonde here. I've read my damn story. From the beginning, I don't remember what you what you were talking about. Who help me was here, people? Who's listening? Where did, no, this was a, a ghost called uh, an apparition called. Yeah. On oh yeah. The, the apparition. Oh, the one in high school in Iowa. The high school in Iowa. Idaho. It starts with you. Idaho. Yeah. Idaho. Get it? Idaho. Idaho. No, you the hoe. <laughs> Shoot, I ain't the hoe. No, oh, I the hoe. <laughs> anyway, Idaho. you guys can find that story on our uh, timeline. I'm not going to even, you know, take up any more time than I have to. I wanted to a minute to say again. You got plenty of time Ron, to kill here. You can uh, you can talk about your <laughs> Idaho ghost. <laughs> um, Josh wanted me to remind you of our meet and greet this Saturday at the In Out Wise. This Saturday. This Saturday, 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 Saturday. Black non paranormal. This Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> Holy, Holy Mullins and Josh Bender. It's so good. Here, you should here. be like a zombie. It's going to be there tonight, that night too. Come get your paranormal fix. Well, uh-uh. what I'm saying. Ha ha. Ha <laughs> anyway, okay, you go ahead. Did I re- did I interrupt you? I'm so I sorry. I didn't mean no, no, you're good. No, good. I read. I just read my story. You you re- you find one. You read your you story, got, and that whole time I was reading my yeah. story. I'm such a dumbass. Yeah, pretty much. But no one could hear you. So you re- read <laughs> I your. <think> you're <laughs> you you read your, you read your story again since you proofread it. <laughs> You know? No, it's okay. It's okay. I just told him, you know. Check it out. I'm like, I'm good. All right, fine. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll, read another, I'll read another story. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, this ex- this one actually has a video attached to it. Um, so a YouTube video. So if you click on this link and you decide to watch it, that'd be cool. Um, the title of the story is. Watch this mysterious ghost-like figure chase a car down a dirt road. <laughs> the Internet is, pro- is appropriately freaked out by the chilling footage from the U.K. It features a punched back figure cloaked in white chasing a car as it desperately tries to back away. The video was taken around Blackburn, England, which is significant for those aware of the Blackburn ghost haunting the area. Of course, who knows about the Blackburn ghost? Who doesn't know about the Blackburn ghost? I mean, seriously. Centuries ago, a monk was killed in, in the nearby Turton Tower. Coincidentally, the footage was shot in early January, around the time when the monk was killed back in 1643. So it's more like a girl than a monk. Could this be the monk still seeking revenge? Uh, in case you were wondering, the screaming person was speaking in Arabic. Leave the car backwards, faster, faster, you please, on the driver. Please, of the driver. Some Redditors claim that this is Clear. This is a clear hoax, or possibly a student film. 
regardless, I don't plan on going out any muddy British rice anytime soon. Let's, let's watch it to see. Hey, I'm going to interrupt you just for a second. My chat, on my, side, my chat is messed up on my side, guys, so I'm not ignoring anybody. I've got to figure out how to reset my chat here. Go ahead. Oh, I haven't even looked at the chat. I need to go back in there and see. Sorry. I've been reading. I'm reading stories. Oh, oh you got one? Oh, i got a story. Yes, I yes. do. Good. I do, but I'm going to have to, I don't know how I'm going to redo that chat, so that sucks. I love chatting with people. Anyway, um, I'm going to, I've seen this one circulating around and I shared it like um, this week. A man sells ghosts in a wooden chest on Craigslist. Now you can buy anything on Craigslist, um, you know, used underwear, breast milk. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, maybe uh, you could, I don't know. I don't maybe go look on Craigslist. I've never been on that. Enough. <laughs> um, adventurous consumers can purchase just about anything on Craigslist these days, including possibly pissed off ghosts residing inside ordinary wooden chests. The folks over at Huffington Post caused wind of a caught wind, not caused, you dumbass, caught wind of a guy who attempted to purchase some kind of supernatural entity residing inside a cramped wooden container from a seller on Craigslist. Unfortunately for the would-be ghost owner, the man sold it to another prospective buyer before he could close the deal. This is interesting. The story of the Craigslist ghost first appeared over at Barstool Sports. According to a guy named Dan, just Dan, he stumbled across someone selling the spectacle spec being for three hundred dollars. This included the something wooden yep. container, which the ghost apparently called home. Why do they have to use big words for people like me? Anyway, I this is the I, mean, I, I know how you feel. <laughs> this is the description. I have a male ghost for sale. He came into my house when I purchased a old wooden chest. He attached to. He is attached to the chest. The chest comes along with the ghost. He is attached to it. Whatever room I put the chest in, he hangs around it. If I try to hide the chest, he searches for it and even gets mad if he cannot find it for a while. You get the chest and the ghost for $300. $300. Do not pass go. So, um... After emailing the seller some questions, including if the ghost was a Green Bay Packers fan, Dan began a curious conversation with the seller. Unfortunately, the price of the ghost jumped from $300 to $1,000. Much to would be owner's dismay, here's what the ghost handler had to say about the entity in question. Hi there, I can't answer any of your questions, and if you showed up with $1,000, I would not and could not sell to you. This is this is a serious piss, uh, I piss it off once and it hurt me i have pics i have also played around with it and had a little fun oh my dear jesus i have a video of that if i if i try to send it off that's ghost porn right there it will hurt me i'm not a quack and this is real no okay unfortunately according to the seller the craigslist ghost ended up going to another individual you can read the entire exchange by heading over to the barstool sports this is the first ghost-related ad to pop up on Craigslist. Total sorority move recently spotted a listing for a possible haunted college house. So you guys can find a little bit of everything on Craigslist, including a ghost. Well, I never thought about buying a um, a ghost chest. But at least the person was being okay. honest and... Let the person know that there was a um, a ghost attached to the chest. Yeah. You know. I mean, there's so many items. Wow. At least he knew there was attachment to it. A lot of people do this, and like antiques and stuff, they don't even realize you they're know. bringing a spirit home with them. I have actually heard of people selling ghosts on eBay. And people buy it. <laughs> Some people, I think one I person spent like $650 on a ghost. Wow. Yeah. That's cray cray. So if I had an imaginary, say I had an imaginary friend named Frank or something, and I put that on a Craig or on eBay, and someone, you know, and someone bought him, and I said, and I sent Frank to them, and let's say Frank never showed up, you know, it's not my fault. Frank decided to go someplace else. You know, I can't control what Frank does. Once he leaves my house, once he's not mine anymore, you know, I can't help if he doesn't show up. So do I have to give the money back? You know? 
Yeah. I mean, hey, Frank's his own person. You know, I can't, I can't control Frank. If, if no. Frank kicks your ass because you've moved his his chest where you don't want him to, that's not my responsibility. You buy the ghost, you buy the chest, you buy the ghost, you buy the you know um, oh shit with it, yeah. I heard it. I, I listened to Darkest Radio and actually read that article on there. And he said, and he said part of the um, email exchange. I think the guy who was on the chest said he got a picture of the ghost. Or he saw the ghost, and it was a guy, and he's shirtless, and he's wearing black blue jeans. That's what that's how he describes what the ghost looks like. The ghost has no shirt, and he's topless, and he's wearing he wears black blue jeans. And he was afraid of the the, seller, the buyer was like, "Are you sure the ghost is not gay? Because I, I don't want to wake up and have the ghost playing with my junk." Or <laughs> something <laughs> like this. Really funny. Hey, if it's a female ghost, we know who to send it to. Casper, Kevin, we we have to send that to him. Because for Christmas, yeah, we'll he wanted a... Uh, shoot, hell, we'll send he him the he fucking did. topless male ghost with black blue jeans since he didn't come on the show last week. We'll show him. True yeah, that. We were going to send you a good... Uh, we, we were going to send you a uh, uh, hot... Not anymore. You're going to get the the gay cowboy ghost. Yeah, see, that's, you know, that's what happens when you, when you don't appear on on our anniversary show. You get the you get the gay cowboy. Damn it! Yeehaw! You ride ride the cowboy. Ride it, my pony. Hi, did you yeah. want? Here, get that Ooh, get well, that well, image well. out of your head. Oh, uh, I think anybody who hears that damn song, they think about Channing Tatum. I don't know about anybody else. I'll think about... Yeah, I don't think about Channing Tatum. No, you do, don't lie. You think about him grinding only, that floor. Only, only when I love it. Mm. So I have to go use the bathroom real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Put yourself oh, on the back. Lordy. <laughs> my, all, my panties all bunched up. <laughs> Give me knickers and not. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh. Um, so um, let's see what else I got here. I shared on here um, the indisputable proof of Bigfoot exists. I think actually when I read this, um, they got aerial footage of uh, you know where they Ariel? have like Google mapping, the, the, the and they got like they think they got Sweet, I love Ariel. Ariel, you little shit. Uh, you know where they go about Google uh, uh, <laughs> under the sea. Ooh, under That's right, the Ursula. We have totally lost our minds here on the Freak Out and Paranormal Show. It's Ryan. You are going to make me lose my mind up in here, up in here, up in here. Y'all going to make me. Okay. Go on. What? Did you? Oh, oh my God. Did you read the article about the, the, the uh, strange gray creatures by the know how? Yes, I did. Um, that's my next article I'm about to read. Yeah, you. All right, I'm, I'm going to read it right now. It looks, dude, it looks weird. It looks like a penis with legs. <laughs> Have you seen it? If you guys look at it, no. come, come check out, check it out. Yeah, it's it, like a penis with legs or like an like, arm with legs. Well, the picture they got up there is a clown, so I'm thinking, but I'll I'll click on it. Yeah. Looks like a and fish with legs coming out of it. Uh, a strange oh creature God, spotted like, like a penis with legs <laughs> or a fish an arm with a fish coming out of their legs. I don't know. What the fuck strange gray that? creature spotted in Ohio. Hello my I'm sorry. It's weird looking. Hello my baby. Hello my darling. Hello my ragtime Hello, girl. Hello my ragtime girl. It's <laughs> baseball. Yeah, it's baseball. Anyway, go ahead. Not much of a creature, I'd say. Just two really, really long legs joined somewhere above, making a little posture of a head. Believe it or not, it's a creature reportedly seen by a man in Ohio this December 12th. Could be a mutant, a great alien, a mutated great alien? If I'll leave the speculation out for the readers. The 60 year old man who had allegedly seen the creature this 12th December was contacted by the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON, who say 
that it will be interesting to find out about similar sightings in the locality. The Highland Park, Highland County Press published an account of the man's bizarre encounter, mentioning that it was while driving along Carmel Road in Ohio that he spotted this great creature. According to his account, the creature had long muscular legs, no hands, no face, and knees fitted backwards. The, the anonymous man is also a former U.S. Marine and a former skeptic, really? according to his wife. Huh? Really? What? Yeah. Yeah? What, really to what? He's a Marine? No, but I don't know. Cause it, I mean, the drawing he made here, it's kind of like, whoa, I mean, what was he smoking? Yeah, I mean, it's six, he's a 63-year-old, like 63-year-old Marine, I think he said. Did you say the age? Maybe didn't say the age. Let's say he's 60, 60 years old. This is what the wife says. My husband saw it. He's a skeptic, almost 60 years old, and a proud Marine. He wouldn't have been seeing it if he had been in shock. I had him draw it for me when he got when he got to the house. He says it was asphalt gray. Our asphalt is gray and about seven feet tall. No arms that he could see, but rest muscular in the legs area. No jawline, and his legs were bent backwards, and it leaned forward as it ran. What do you think this mis- this new mystery creature is? To me, it looks like the ni- nightmares materialization materialization of a da- 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 daddy long legs, unintended. Meanwhile, if you have a similar creature or just you know, uh, it's just an advertisement for the website, but so yeah, that's uh, wow. yeah. I saw this. Uh, I saw this. Um. That is a freaky creature, though. I don't know, man. I, I have to question what he was on. <laughs> but uh, there was this, um, in Oregon, there was a 13-mile-long crop circle, like, formosh- formation, formotion, formation found. And formotion. And it was, like, kick-ass. Wow. It was 13.3 miles of wine, okay, in this dry lake mm-hmm. bed in Oregon. And I'm at... If you look on on there, it's just ridiculous. I mean, if someone did this, they're so off. <laughs> I mean, it had taken them a very long time to do it. So I don't know. But um, it's interesting. Y'all can look the article up on our uh, timeline. That's pretty cool. It is. It's. I don't. I've never got crop circles. Like I don't. I don't see. There's so much I need to learn about UFOs. I mean, I know a lot about them. It's just. It's not my. Not my subject. Well, it's just like anything. If you're not really into it, you know, as, as much as you should be, it's well, kind of like, a, like a, a passing glance at it. You're not going to know yeah. as much as you should. You know? Right. Yeah, I, well, I, I know, you know there are a ton of cryptids out there that no one's ever heard of before. That's where we're trying to get people to. Exactly. You know, int- trying to introduce these people to them. And then if they want to learn more about them, they can, you know, do the necessary research. You know, we exactly. don't need to be experts on everything or know much about anything at all. We we we're we're learning just as much as everybody else. Everyone. You know, exactly. We're here here to learn ourselves, you know. I mean, Most definitely. Show to learn new stuff. But I got an interesting article after you're done reading your article. Oh, you can go ahead. I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, you know, since this is called the Freaking Awesome Paranormal Show, and we do, in the word freak, freaking, the word freak is the main part because we definitely enjoy our freaks. And since Holly just got cut off again, it's a good thing I have a story to read. Uh, We're going to go back to the United Kingdom because apparently – they have some horny people, very horny people in the, in the United Kingdom. So horny that they like to fuck mailboxes. Yes. Paul Bennett what? convicted after having sex with a mailbox. We have we've had guys, people have sex with blow up rafts here in the United States. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. To uh, not be out, not to be outdone, our friends across the pond have decided to fuck mailboxes. Now, I've seen mailbox holes, and they're pretty big. I'm wondering, how can you get any satisfaction from fucking a mailbox? I mean, 
are they smaller in Britain? I mean, or does she just have this massive schlong that can fit into a mailbox? I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's just. That's I have no idea. I've never been with. Yeah, let's say that. You ever been, never been with a mailbox? You ever put on your strap on no. and go outside the fucking mailbox? Yeah. All right. Uh, they a man who lives in England. <laughs> it doesn't get lonely in pound, I know. Has been oh, no, pound. as a sex offender. You want to pound the mailbox? That's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> as a stamp, as a sex. How do you step? How do you? How, is it really a sex offender if he is, is the mailbox complaining? Uh, uh, <laughs> it was stamped as a sex offender after being found guilty of having sex with the mailbox. Paul Bennett pleaded guilty on Thursday to two counts of indecent exposure and using threatening and abusive words with abusive behavior. Uh, the mirror report. So he's talking, he's being abusive to the mailbox. You fucking bitch, I'm gonna fuck you so hard. Oh my god, yeah. Mm, take that mail. Oh god, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he mailed that. He made that mailbox a bitch. Mm, yeah, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> For you, you, you guys them, just turned into this show. <laughs> fucking mailbox. <laughs> Oh man! And you know, the fucking flag goes up. It means it's all horny and shit. <laughs> the tweet stemmed from a <laughs> September ninth incident where he attempted to have sex with a mailbox in a public area. So you're in a public square in England, and all of a sudden this guy walks in, walks up, trousers, and starts humping a mailbox. It's like, oh yeah, you're dirty. You thought the dirty fucking whore mailbox gonna fuck you so hard? Mm. Who's your postman? Oh, who's your postman? <sighs> Witnesses told the court oh, that Bennett had pulled down his pants in the shopping in the shopping area and started to publicly perform a sexual act on himself in public. Well, you gotta get you gotta get roused up first. I mean, not much foreplay when it comes to a mailbox sex. Boston <laughs> coding attorney Kate Beatty said Bennett then walked through the, through the post box and started making sexual advances advance towards it. Oh, so yeah, he's trying to. Oh, baby, come here. Oh, you're looking fine. Look at you. Look at you. Look at oh. Uh, mm, look at all that mail inside of you. Oh, it's so hot. Ben <laughs> reportedly wrapped himself against the mailbox while holding his hands in the air. He kept shouting, "Wow!" during his mailbox masturbation. After he finished, Ben pulled his pants up and started swinging on a lamp spot, lamp spot, lamp post, according to Manchester Evening News. Folks later found Bennett wow. exposing, him, exposing himself in front of another store. Officers said he drunkenly shouted and swore at them, according to the Express. Bennett's attorney. <laughs> How the hell is this a fucking attorney? I mean, you got to be the joke <laughs> of your law firm if you're going to be his attorney. Yeah, really? His attorney, Martin Jones, told the court he realized yeah. his client's behavior left witnesses ashamed, disgusted, and upset. You think so? Yeah, <laughs> I realized that my client's behavior was kind of. Uh, weird. My client accepts that, he said, according to the Telegraph. Clearly, there are issues that need to be addressed. You think? A court uh, ordered Bennett to undergo alcohol treatment. And I've been drunk before. I've been really drunk before. I've been passed yeah, out, I'm... fucking yeah. horny as fuck drunk before. But I've never, ever wanted to fuck a mailbox. Yeah, me neither. I've never wanted to fuck a stuffed animal. I've never wanted to fuck a raft. Uh, life raft or an ATM machine or rub myself uh. on a park bench. <laughs> I, you know, the fact that he was making uh, sexual no. advances toward the mailbox, it's I'm like, hey, baby, what's, what you doing? Oh, what's your name? Ooh. Mm, I don't know what they call post office and post office boxes in Britain, but I mean, <laughs> Well, they look like too. I mean, they could not be like ours. They could be. They might yeah, I don't know. They look I don't like. know. We need to look that up. Yeah, we should. I want to do that while that. you're talking. And like, I'm afraid if I might, I might get turned on if I see it though. You know, because <laughs> I mean, damn. It's like it's like, that's like fucking porn right there. Out. It's like you should put you like NSFW or something on on the picture just in case and put it on our put it on our site <laughs> just in case little kids come on the site and look at it. Oh, you know, like, okay, okay. Wait a minute now. You might get people in trouble. 
you know. Let's see. By uh. <laughs> you well, we don't want people to think we're just bad people. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're, we're not. We're not trying to put smut on right. our on our website. You know, there, there might be kids looking at our, at our Facebook page and stuff. We, yeah, we make sure that people them. know that we have. Yeah, we have that disgusting contraption. We want people to, like you know getting different, you know, getting ideas when they see that picture of the. British mailbox. I know. Bye, Tay. It's like well, whenever I, I pass by, opening? like, a, an opening. I don't, I don't know. I, like, I think these are, like, more of, like, you know, on the street kind of mailboxes. Not, I see. I mean, mm-hmm. home mailboxes. Well, I mean, she, uh, they said that he, they were at a, um, they were at a shopping arcade. Well, it had to be one of these. Shopping Mars arcades. Yeah, it's got like a slit. Oh, so it's... He might have thought it was a sideways vagina. Could have been. Well, you put the picture on on our page, and um, yeah, they can can see judge for themselves. Okay. Yeah, if they think. I mean, if it, again... If, if that that picture is too much for you to see, and it Keep really growing. bothers you, we apologize. Don't open it. Don't open the picture at work, okay? We don't want anybody getting in trouble. No. Because it is apparently a very sexy mailbox, and yeah, we're just What's giving you our, our our warning. Mm. <laughs> I'm wow. gonna post that, but. Uh, did you know, like, uh, George Clooney got an English mansion It's supposed to be haunted? Tell us about it. Well, it says here in this article, he said, I've been asked many times what I would do if I won a million dollars in the lottery, shopping, traveling, and helping others at the top of the list. However, buying a new house, you're taking a chance of what you're getting into. After George Clooney and his wife, Amal... All, or whatever, recently purchased a 16 million manor house on the River Psalms in the village of Sonic in Berkshire, England. Rumor has it the newlyweds' new abode comes with a ghost story. According to the report, um, Yuri Geller, a magician and illusionist who lives nearby, claims the nine bedroom getaway is haunted. Geller said he has seen strange things on the Sonning Bridge, which is located near the Clooney's home. The website reported that the Geller said there is a ghost of a little girl who crosses the Sonning Bridge. I have no doubt in my mind that George Clooney will see her, he said. It is the best house in the neighborhood to be able to see this ghost. Apparently, Yuri lives just a short walk away and will undoubtedly inform the Clooney's of their potential potential ghostly accusation. Accusation. Yeah. When I moved into my home nearly 20 years ago, I will admit some strange things happened. Objects would move, disappear, noises that startled him, blah, blah, blah. Once he heard the history of the home and learned of a woman who died there many years earlier, he spoke to her and told her she should leave. It's been quite ever since. So I don't know what he's got to do with it anyway. Clooney hasn't officially com- commented on whatever he or his wife has seen if they have seen anything as far as apparitions in the home. But rumor has it that George and Amal, Amal, I don't even know how to pronounce her name, are sailing in nicely and even making friends with the locals while hanging at the local pub. Oh, cool. Back to you, Ron. Yeah, they're... Well, hanging at the local pub. The pub. The local pub is Sorry. my room. Shit. The local pub. We got and drink. It is. Hey, that's I'm not crying. me. That's you. That's you're the one going out and drinking shit. Don't even know what you're. You don't even know what you're drinking. Hey. <laughs> right. Going clubbing, showing those girls what's up. Well, it's not clubbing around here. It's called barring. Barring. Barin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Whatever yeah. you call. Whatever. Well, oh, hey. Yeah. Whatever. I've what always thought my son, ever since I was in high school, was saying, whatever. 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 Okay. Right. I'm posting the picture here in a bit. Like I said before, what guys. Show? 
you know, but it just put it just put a disclaimer on there, okay, Holly? You know. Okay. Because you know, you know, my little kids getting, you know, see that mailbox and saying, "Oh my God, Mom!" and I've had to talk with her parents about mailbox sex, you know, the birds uh, and the bees, uh, post post it yeah. and shit, you know. All right, you know, well, it's already a big. Take... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I said it's already a big rage, rage, and like big thing over in in Britain. So we need to educate our children in America about these mailboxes. You know, yeah, people people think your your pains are so much more classy than us, and that's probably true. I mean, we're. We're over here fucking ATM machines. Let's just have a fancy boy. You know, okay. Fucking fucking rafts and shit. I mean, the they, British they take it to another level. And they're like, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna degrade myself and fuck a floaty toy. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go <laughs> to a high class. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick my dick into a mailbox because that's how much high class Britons will do it. And I'm gonna and you know what? Um, high class because I talk with a British accent and we all know. That anybody who talks with a British accent has class. I mean, that's obvious. Exactly. <clears throat> Obviously, Ryan. Obviously. Okay, <sighs> let's go to space, shall we? Oh, let's do it. Been there, done that. Let's, let's do it again. About, let's talk. Let's talk about UFOs. Let's talk about Alf. Let's talk about ET. Uh, a orange yellow UFO glides over three Florida towns. This is on the Huffington Post. Uh, Saturday night, several eyewitnesses in three Florida locations reported seeing unusual groups of lights in the sky, sometimes forming a gliding triangle pattern. At approximately 6.35 p.m., YouTube user Jennifer She saw three lights above a West Palm Beach, Florida highway. The red arrows in the image above point to of those lights behind the road sign. Uh, she posted a comment to the ufocaptor.com page describing the aerial, bright aerial orbs that she videotaped on her photos. I saw one first, then it disappeared over the oceans, she wrote. She, C-S-C-H-E-E, she, same as she. So it was she, last name, not she, the pronoun. She wrote, then I saw the three in this video. They were, then there were two that came that, I have another another video, then another, then another. They all followed the same path. They all disappeared over the ocean, up in the sky, not down over the horizon. She wasn't alone during her sighting. Another another eyewitness, Caitlin, described on her commented actually on her similar observations about 13 miles north of West Palm Beach. I saw three, but one at a time, in my neighborhood going towards the east coast. Each one bright, and when their light disappeared, I kept tracking with my eye and could see a silver dot still gliding through the air in Palm, in Palm Beach Gardens. It was going west to east, all three of them, Caitlin commented on UFOcaptor.com. Another UFO captor commenter, Mark Testerman, wrote that he and others saw unusual lights about a half hour after she's sighting in 170 miles northwest of West Palm Beach. We saw these same red lights tonight. But we saw 12 in all in a jagged line in Lakeland, Florida. We didn't video it while we were driving. They were heading in a south direction, then just turned and headed back the other direction. Glad this was caught on tape. So, pretty interesting um, stuff happening in the skies over um, Florida, apparently. Whoa. Yeah. Florida. Florida. Florida, as they say. Florida. On the street. <laughs> <clears throat> That's interesting. Where she's in the yeah. So oh. Is it still snowing over there? Uh, I haven't looked. Let me go, let me go look while you, while you queue up your next story. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, nope, it stopped. Nope, uh, it's still snowing. Yeah, it's still snowing. Uh, I couldn't see it. It's not doing much. It's not like it's covering the roads or anything. My windshield will be cold. We'll be closed. We'll be closed. We'll be covered. Well, I get my car. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to tell this one. I shared it on our page, but for anybody listening, um, if you didn't see it on our page, uh, producer Kim Foley had a disturbing final wish. Producer Kim Foley's Larger Than Life story continues to add outlandish chapters even after his death. Fowler, who passed away January 15th following a struggle with cancer, cut a colorful path through the record business during his long career, working with a long list of artists including Frank Zappa, Warren Devon, the Devon, Kiss, and Alice Cooper, as well as overseeing the early career of the Runaways, the groundbreaking band that helped erode rocks stubborn gender barriers while launching the careers of Joan Jett and Lita Ford. According to TMZ, musical taboos were the only boundaries Fowley wanted to break. The Celebrity News Network has filed a report detailing the unorthodox plans Fowley anyway, made for his court but in some somewhat strange turn they've taken in the day since his death. Okay. So, without going into much detail, suffice it to say that Fowley expressed an interest in appearing as a model in a photo shoot for Girls and Corpse magazine, which is apparently a real thing that attracts enough subscribers to stay, to stay in business during the post-print era. According to the emails unearthed by TMZ sources, Fowley reached out to the magazine in 2012 to offer himself up, and although the publisher passed on his most extreme request, they did agree to cover a shoot between his corpse and his girlfriend. Wow. I didn't know they do stuff like this. The problem now, at least for the magazine, is that since the offer was made and presumably money changed hands, Fowley parted ways with his girlfriend and in 2014 married Cara Wright. His wife at the time of his death, Wright, was, has, was, has reportedly been in... Uh, unreachable since Fowley's passing as the report puts it the magazine can't find her to allow them to shoot the body. Wow. It's worth noting wow. that more than a few of Fowley's fans have chimed in in the comments section of the TMZ report pointing out that he loves getting a rise out of people and may have been hoping to pull off one last shock. So yeah, that's that's more than last shock for sure. That's that is crazy. It's crazy. I didn't know that they done shit like that. Oh, that was a that's crazy. Wow. wow. Oh, I've got oh one more to tell you. I just saw the mailbox. I did you? I got like, oh my god, I'm so excited about this because I shared it earlier in the week. Fox uh-huh. plans to reboot X Files with David and Gillian Anderson returning. David, oh my god, X Files is coming back, bitches. You sound excited. I am. I love X Files. You seem Do excited. Like... Yeah. No, I'm very, I'm very yeah, excited. I cream my panties. Anyway, I yeah, that's on our page as well. But anyway, that's gonna be freaking awesome. You know they have um air sex championships where you can simulate like you know the air guitars and shit? They have air <laughs> sex championships. <laughs> like, how does that work? Uh, if you, I put, I actually put the post on um, our page, and okay. yeah, I'll read all it's that. basically people mimicking sexual stuff, like you know, they play air guitar, but it's, it's like sexual positions, and like I guess the noises they make while oh. in that sexual position. Like yeah. air humping. Take a look. <laughs> yeah, it is. Take a look at it. Exactly. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we have time for one more story, and this one is um, uh, should go funny or go serious. Uh, I want to talk about demons. I'm looking at these uh, pictures. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, 13 of the most wicked demons from Christianity and other religions. Um, this was actually on our website. I posted it, I guess I posted it a couple of days ago. Um, nowadays when people reference demons, they don't usually mean a horned gremlin from hell. 
But if you think about it, belief in demons and demonic deities is still very prevalent in other in our culture. The Exorcist, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and American Horror Story, Asylum, have all featured demons in one form of another or another. These creatures were pitted against the heroes of the story, a classic battle between between good and evil. But that's not to say demons are referenced in fiction are only re- re- referenced in fiction. The most sinister of demons aren't on TV or in movies, but in, in obscure stories from Christianity and other religions lore. Here are some demons that we'd really like to see in the next season of American Horror Story. All right, each you know each story, each description has a picture underneath it. So if you go on the website, you can see what I'm talking about when I'm reading this. Asag is a demon from Sumerian, Sumerian mythology who causes sickness. In his spare time, he likes to perform sexual acts on mountains so that he can chill with his legion of rock monster spawn. So this guy fucks mountains. That's hardcore. <laughs> so, I mean, British people, they just fuck mailboxes. The, de- the female demon, Ab- Abizu, um, again, if I'm butchering the pronunciation, I apologize. I'm not trying yeah, to. Really? Like, don't, you know, yeah. So any I won't I won't be offending any um anybody. Uh Abazu is a Jewish horror horror, not horror, horror that is responsible for any miscarriages. She herself is infertile, so she so her so her so she proceeds to kill children out of jealousy. Whoever wrote this shit does not know how to talk. Right. She herself is infantile, so her proceeds to kill children out of jealousy. Uh, number three, a harbinger of old souls, Ron Wee, comes to Earth to feed when it's time for relatives to die. Barbatos is a duke of hell who specializes in giving people the ability to talk to animals and helping pirates find buried treasure. Well, that's just good. that guy does not sound bad. No. You know? But there's got to be something that goes along with it. Yeah. Like uh, catch, you know. Yeah. King Belleth is a powerful king from hell who commands many demons arise. They say that when he rides, all different all different kinds of music is heard at the same time. Also, he supposedly wrote a supremely evil book about mathematics. Okay. <laughs> evil math. <laughs> okay. um, I you know I knew math was evil when I was in school. Now I know for sure uh-huh. that it is. The right. warrior demon, <laughs> Duke Elegus, knows the outcomes of every, of every future war, all the way down to which soldier killed which. He had a serpent tail and rides a horse he stole from the Garden of Eden. Viewer, a president of hell, uh, but it's unclear if he was ever actually elected by his demon peers. They don't have democratic process in hell, apparently. And if it was, I'm sure the elections were rigged. He's a penchant for poisonous herbs, and based on how he looks, he he or he possibly do a sick cartwheel. Wow! So, so they have elections in hell, apparently. The common depiction of Agoras from Christian de- demonology, Agoras from Christian demonology, is an elderly elderly man riding a crocodile with a hawk resting on his arm. He is Duke <laughs> of Hell. Duke, 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 Duke of Hell, Hell, Hell who teaches many languages, but only the curse words and horrible th- ethnic slurs of each. So, you know, you only teach you the bad words. So, you know. Uh, King Paimon is one of Lucifer's most loyal lieutenants. He has a b- bizarrely specific, specific way of being conjured, and when he comes, the conqueror must endure a series of intensely personal questions to appease him. It actually looks like a girl in this picture. Um, Ala Akama, Akamana from Zor, Zoroastrian legend, Zoroastrian legend, co- controls the evils of the mind, such as sexual desire and greed, that distract people from being wholesome and good. This is why he is often depicted controlling people like a marionette. This guy's got like a, a goat head on it, kind of like a gold skull with the yellow eyes, and he's got like it looks like a puppet. With strings attached to his attached to his fingers, Lady Midday is a Slavic demon who floats around workers toiling in fields, asking them tough questions. If they answer correctly, she removes their head with a scythe. 
The Christian demon Belferger is one of the seven seven princes of hell. is often associated with orgies and general debauchery. Uh, God, he, his favorite number is a very long one, um, and he is held ambassador to France. Oddly enough, so, oh, I wonder what held ambassador to the U.S. is. Well, it looks like we're almost out of time for our our edition of Freaking Awesome Supernatural Talk. Yes, so, who we, we have are. on the show next week? They're Holly. Holly. We yeah. have Dr. Lauren Cielo. She is pretty awesome. I can't wait to talk to her. Um, thank you guys for listening tonight. And for anyone who is in the chat or who's going to listen to this show, we appreciate you guys very much. Yes, thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Um, you know, we get, we're nothing without with us. We're nothing without our listeners. I, I've right. had a I've had a really hard time talking tonight for some reason. <laughs> Can't get any words out. Fucking did you Did you sleep last night, any Ron? Yeah, I actually did get some sleep. Last I did. I'm talking turn on. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, shoot. Uh, maybe. You sent me your sleep vibes. I might have. I'm going to sleep good tonight, though, I'm for sure. You guys have yeah, a good night. Yeah, I hope night. so. Yeah, you guys take care. And don't forget to tune in next week <laughs> for our show. Oh, my God. It, I just saw Dennis's post <laughs> back to What'd my What did he say? Uh, you know where Matt took a picture of his ads and stuff? <laughs> oh, my God. Dennis, Dennis posted one back. Oh my god, I didn't see that shit. Oh man. Oh. That's funny. Oh. So Wow. Well that was a fun show. It was. It was. Now I've yeah, gotta come so, up with some intelligent questions for next week. God damn. You know, yeah, I mean oh, that should be hard. Oh. I've been it's finding like, all kinds of Go ahead Well I mean You know it's hard because you're She's obviously been on talk shows before And you know She has we don't but ask she the, same, the same is. questions Right so we want to be kind of different We're also laid back we're not uptight And we do know a little bit of what we're talking about <laughs> Cause, yeah, You know from I mean, what I've seen From the shows Yeah we we know stuff enough to to fake it, I guess. Yeah. You know, but not enough. You know, it's still we're still learning, and we don't know. Find out jack shit about astral projection and stuff to be able to talk to her about that, and um, you know, get what it's like to actually do it. You know, and talk to someone. You watch the videos. We can't ask the videos questions you know, about what's going on and stuff with actual projection. So it would be nice to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak, you know? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. But I'm going to see it run because it is cold as hell, and um, I'm going to walk up the driveway to my car and go home and walk up my driveway. Well, thank you for describing each detail of what you're going to do. I'm going to get, I'm going to get up out of the chair. I'm going to walk to the door. I'm going to open the door. I'm going to walk to the driveway. Walk to my car. I'm going to open the car door. I'm going to sit in the car. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to put it in drive. Then I'm going to... And you guys, everybody, you know, if you, you're feeling kind of lonely tonight and, you know, feeling sorry for yourself and you're like, you know what, I just... I don't have anybody. I don't. Nobody loves me. You can get on our website, our Facebook page actually, and you can take a look, a long, long, lustful look at that sexy mailbox we put on on our on our page, and just maybe, exactly. maybe you can go to bed, you know, with a warm feeling inside after you take care of your business, because that's where you yeah. here to help people. We're like a match. Exactly. We're like, fuck, we're like match.com people with their mailboxes. Yeah. Mm. That's where I'll be. Yeah. And everlasting love <laughs> for me. Sorry. <laughs> All right. 
All, all right, right Holly, you're not wrong. I will talk to you later tomorrow, and we'll talk to our freaks all week long on Facebook. Don't forget yes. to tune in to every other your your and radio show, and the Definitely. your network. And tune yes. into Full Spectrum Radio on on Wednesday night. They have a really special guest on there, so tune in. All right. And we will see you guys next Monday night. We're signing off. Good night. I'm out. <laughs>